Hi, I'm Dr. Altman. I'm in Mobile, Alabama at the uh, Battleship Museum here, standing on the deck of the United States submarine, the uh, drum. This is fun. I'm having a riot. This is great. The question is, uh, how does this thing float? And then how does it sink? And here's the important question. How does it after it sink, then it starts floating again? That's the question everybody wants to know. Will it ever start floating again? And it's all about density, something called superpositioning due to differential densities. A submarine can change its density. A submarine, when you load it up, it's less dense than water, so it floats. But when you get it out into operation, you take on water, which increases the mass to volume ratio, increasing the density. When it's neutrally buoyant, it has the same density as water, it just kind of hovers. And then it takes on a little bit more water and you can submerge and go uh, lower and lower and lower as you take on more and more water. When it's time to rise again, you blow that water out using compressed air, hopefully, if everything works according to plan. And now your empty shell of a sub is filled now mostly with empty air, so it's less dense than the water around it, causing the water to push it back up. This entire process is driven by gravity. Gravity is pulling down on all things equally. Now with solid objects, you can put a, a light thing down and put a heavy thing on top of it. But with liquids, a heavy thing will be pulled down a little bit more and it'll push the lighter liquids out of the way. And where something floats in a liquid it has to do with its superpositioning. And its superpositioning is based on its density, hence the phrase superpositioning due to differential densities. Travel inside of a submarine would have been very tight. The hatches like this are set up so that they can be closed and sealed in case there's a leak in one part of the ship. And this is mostly air which gives them their buoyancy, allows them to go upwards. If this fills with water, even if there's nobody in here, it still could mean the end of the sub because now it's more dense than water. It sinks and it can't float anymore. This of course is the submarine of the aquatic world. This is the manatee. Well, not really. This is just a model of a manatee. But a manatee would be neutrally buoyant. If it wants to rise, it can swim to the top. If it wants to sink, it can swim to the bottom. But it also has what's called an air bladder. An air bladder, it can expand or contract and change its density. And if it changes its density, it changes its buoyancy. It begins to sink. If it's less dense than the water around it, it begins to float. Apparently some manatees come ashore and when they do they wear hats so they don't get sunburned. Behind me now is the USS Alabama. This is a battleship. As hard as it is to believe, it displaces the amount of water equal to its weight. This boat's displacing an amount of water equal to its own weight. That means as the boat sinks, the water rises around it till it reaches a point where the water has risen equal to its weight. Gravity pulling down the water equals the weight down of the boat pushing out on the water and the two of them are in equilibrium, the boat floats. That's big. But it's mostly hollow. It's mostly empty inside. And it's, so it's the air we're keeping track of, not the steel. Steel, uh, steel doesn't float. It's air that floats. And so you take steel, fill it full of air, that'll float. Don't want to get a hole in it though. Be careful. Well, you'd hate to get one of these things mad at you, wouldn't you? Yikes! See the wires on top of those things? Um, okay. To check for straightness? Nope. Keep the birds away? That's it. <laughs> Keep the birds off. <laughs> 